and happy Wisdom Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in and for choosing to spend some of your day with me. It's your girl Marie Milagros here. And during the month of October, we're talking about self-care and self-love and different ways to participate in, to cultivate a practice of, to activate self-care and self-love. Because when we take responsibility for and take care of ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, we are better, healthier, happier. And when we are, we're better for everyone that we love and everything that we do. And I say better, meaning healthier for everyone that we love and everything that we do. Everything starts within and everything starts here first and foremost. So we have to make sure that we're aligned in a space where we're taking care of ourselves, we're taking responsibility for ourselves so that in our relationships, we're bringing our best self. And so in the work that we do, we're bringing our best self. And that also means that best is different from day to day. Because if something happened, let's say there was construction outside your house in the middle of the night, because sometimes they do night construction, and you didn't have the opportunity to sleep, that well, your best is not the same as your best on a full night's rest, right? So we self-care, we self-love, and we do the best we can when we show up into the spaces of our lives. Well, today we're going to go a little bit deeper because I was found this old picture of myself and my, one of my siblings and some neighbors, and I'm looking at this little girl, that's me, and I said to this little girl, you poor baby, you had no idea that you got to ask for what you needed. You had no idea that you even had the right to have needs because we grew up pretty poor, very poor. We grew up poor and we grew up in a space where if we asked for something, it was instantly shot down with rejection. And if we proclaimed a need in a different way, it was usually melt with discipline. And I do that because that's a a belt, you know, like discipline, or it was met with stop talking, right? So the adults in our lives were under such stress and such pressure from not having enough money, from living in poverty, from not having enough education, from not having enough of whatever, that they felt like their job was to minimize the children around them so that they wouldn't set them up for disappointment, right? So I get that the the adults around us were saying to us, no, you can't be that. No, you can't do that. No, you can't have that because... Then they thought, I'm protecting you from having these big dreams that you're not going to be able to accomplish and that aren't going to be real in your life. And I'm saving you in the long run because people can only give from where they are, right? Because everything starts here. So I was thinking about this whole thing with needs and I realized that, and I've talked about this before, everything that we do and the choices that we make are based on programming. So either we're just kind of going through the motions of our old childhood programming, or we're being intentional about being aware and paying attention to that programming so that we can create shifts, get help where we need to, and alter to get to a healthier and happier place. Now, specifically, when talking about self-care and self-love and talking about asking for help, I'm legitimately talking about asking for help. Now, I can say this because I have so much pride. I don't like asking for help. I would rather do it all by myself and break myself because I recognize that my old programming says you don't get to ask for help. My childhood programming says when you ask for help, you are stressing out other people. And it was made very clear from that programming that you are stressing me out. So don't ask for anything. Figure it out on your own. So then if that's my childhood, if that was your childhood, whether it meant discipline with a belt or just being rejected over and over and over or being told legitimately, you're making me crazy. You're causing me stress as a child. Oh my gosh, I don't want to cause people stress. So I'm just not going to express needs at all. Right. And so then we become adults who continuously repeat these patterns because what we did initially for survival, we continue to do, even though it no longer serves us because we're so well programmed into repeating those behaviors. Now, I have a cousin and as a child, her life was very different. In her house, it was whatever you need, whatever you need, whatever you need. So all of her needs were constantly met to the degree that she is unaware of her own capacities and resilience and feels like it's everybody else's job to save and rescue her because her programming said, 
you don't have the capacity to do this on your own. You're not resourceful. You're not resilient. You're not strong enough. So we're going to run in and rescue you and do it for you. For whatever reason, her parents felt like doing that and kind of putting a bubble around her. It had to do with their own stuff because we can only operate from our own filters. So her reality right now as an adult is very different than mine, whereas I have a hard time asking for help and I am getting better at it. She asks for help all the time. And when people say no, she takes it as a personal offense, right? I feel like if I ask for help, I'm stressing everybody out and putting them under a burden. None of those things are real, right? It's just from our old programming, again, that no longer serves us. So she and I were recently having a conversation and I was talking to her about this and just kind of explaining from my perspective. And then she had the insight of her own background and perspective, which was brilliant. And then I had to make sure that I said, okay, what's good about this, right? That's always, I'm always looking for what good came from even the most unlikely circumstances that you would think good can't come from because it helps us change our perspective about what we've been through. And then that alters our filter and then allows us to see more good in our lives. So for me, I find that myself and other people who were raised similarly, we are resilient and resourceful. That's that's an awesome thing to be. We also have to figure out how to create a balance so that we don't feel like we have to do everything by ourselves all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And we not only accept help when it's offered, but we actually ask for help because that's part of being a human. Now, she recognized that she's good at asking for help and being vulnerable. That's really wonderful and powerful. That's necessary in life. She also recognizes that she also needs to create some shifts to get herself back to a centered place where she can recognize that I don't always need people to rescue me. I can kind of do that one on my own, right? And that's really hard for her because her new affirmations are, I'm capable, I'm resourceful, I'm I'm resilient, I'm able, because that wasn't her programming, where on the flip side, that was mine. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because I want you to understand that a lot of times we go, why am I sabotaging myself? Why am I running around in circles? Why can't I just change this? Because it doesn't happen overnight. We are rewriting old programming. And when we are paying attention, when we are, because this is also self-care and self-love, is paying attention, self-awareness goes into the category of self-care and self-love. I'm aware enough to recognize that as a child, I was taught that I do not get to have needs. So as an adult, I still live in this space where I don't ask for help, even when I am desperate and broken. I don't ask for help. I'll figure it out. I'll plow through. I'll be all right. (laughs) Right? Insane. Because I have this wonderful community of people who are willing to help, I just have to recognize that that's my own stuff. So what I've been doing is saying it more and more out loud. I will say to my friends, this is really hard for me to ask for help. I understand this is my old programming. I don't want you to feel stressed and burdened. And they go, are you crazy? I want to help you, blah, blah. But I have to say it out loud to kind of unpack it. And then it creates a space for us to have a dialogue. And then when they go, no, no, I'm absolutely able to help because I'll tell you what, my people, if they're not able to help, they're going to let you know. That's what's really great about my relationships, right? So they're not able to help, they'll let me know. And if they can't, that's okay too because I'll figure it out, right? And if they can, then that's really great for me because it causes me to expand because then I have to allow the help to come in, right? So on the flip side... Um, with my cousin, who kind of everything was always done for her and settled and taken care of, she is starting to get to a place where she stopped asking for help. And the people in her life who are running to rescue her all the time, she's saying, no, thank you. And that's really hard for her to say, no, thank you. I'm going to figure this one out, right? So self-care and self-love is also about self-awareness. And it's also about asking for and allowing yourself to receive help. And it's also about not asking for and not receiving help when it's something that you have the capacity to manage and handle on your own because for you, it's going to help build up the reminders of who you are, how amazing you are, how capable you are, and you get to step into your gifts. If everyone is always running to rescue that person, they're not able to fully utilize their gifts, their experiences, their education, their, right? When we have these opportunities to use our gifts, 
it makes you feel really good. It boosts your self-esteem. It makes you feel capable. It makes you feel accomplished, right? So the goal is to pay attention and to become aware of where we are on this spectrum and then to, in terms of asking for help, and then to allow ourselves to slowly, lovingly, kindly, very deliberately, intentionally, through dialogue and conversation with ourselves and with others, find our way back to that center point so we can find that healthy balance in our lives. Because I have to remind myself that I am deserving and worthy of help. I am deserving and worthy of having needs, of asking for assistance. She is deserving and worthy of n- not being rescued. I know that sounds crazy, but, and she's deserving and worthy of being rescued. Both of those are real, right? She, the reason why I mentioned this is because she had said that she feels bad when people are always rescuing her, like she's not able to do it herself. And that's not a good place. We don't want to be in a place where we feel yucky and gross about our decisions. So we have to be willing to be aware of what we're doing and why we are doing it so that we can create those shifts slowly, lovingly, kindly, with intention to get us back to center. If you are like me and you don't ask for help, that is not self-care or self-love. And as much as I'm saying this to you, I'm also saying it to myself. We get to ask for help. Ask for help, right? It's part of the human connection. We're designed to have strengths that we can complement each other. Um, And you deserve rest. And you deserve to collaborate. And you deserve opportunities to delegate. That's a brilliant thing. Um, And on the other side, if you are always asking for help and you recognize that it's because you feel like you aren't capable and you can't do, and that feels kind of yucky, then you also get to say, no, thank you, and figure it out, right? And figure it out. Or maybe you just ask the person who usually runs to rescue you, how would you solve this? Give me the steps. Just show me how. Don't do it for me. Because that way it builds up your own self-esteem and your capacities and capabilities. So that's what I have for you today for self-care and self-love. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you know someone who can benefit from this, please share it because it is really helpful. It was helpful for me. I know it was helpful for my cousin. And it's helpful for all of my clients when we talk about this stuff and kind of unpack it. We don't want to live there, but we definitely want to be aware of those spaces so that we can, again, lovingly and intentionally shift away from that to come to a place of center where we have more internal balance, if you will. Um, So if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you know someone who can benefit from it, share it. And if you haven't already, what you waiting for? Subscribe to my channel, yo. You get nuggets like this every week, yo. Okay, I'm done. Um, And I hope that you have uh, the rest of your week is super sparkly everything. And that your weekend is super sparkly everything. And the start of your next week is super sparkly everything because you are deserving and worthy. And part of super sparkly everything is finding that balance and loving yourself enough to say, yes, please, I need some help. And no, thank you. I got this. Whatever that looks like for you in this space in your life. I love you so much. There's nothing you can do about it. And I will see you next week. Peace.